Uh, hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation in Seattle with a video introduction to, or part one, to an introduction to the navigation program OpenCPN. This is a course we use as an introduction to e, uh, e electronic chart navigation in our online course. So this is directed to our students or to any interested party who might want to use the, this program and benefit from it. It's a free program, uh, very versatile actually, and you download the program from opencpn.org. Opencpn.org brings you to this web page here. Then you go to download, download latest version. And then these are the two downloads. This is for the PC version, this is for the Mac. We actually have both of them here and run them equally. Um, they are essentially the same. Uh, the one I'm on now is a Mac, but um, they're, they're the same. So you download it here. It's uh, 23 megabytes. You download it and then uh, install it uh, onto your computer. And uh, that, let me just close this for now. We don't need that. So when you install it, this is what the program will look like when you open it. Actually, you won't see this. That won't be there. And um, so, the, and there'd be no charts installed. And I'm rolling the mouse at the moment. And this is the base map of the program. It looks like there's a waypoint stored here. I can delete that. Um, or a mark. Uh, this little indicates where the boat happens to be or was last there when the program was closed. And this program has no charts installed. This is the map of the world. It's a little bit crude as a base map, but it's plenty good to get started. And, and we'll see. So um, let's go, the first thing I think, let's load some charts. And then I want to go through some of the setup here. But let's load some charts. And we'll pull in uh, two or three charts that we actually use in the course. And we'll start with those. Um, and so with this program in the latest version, they have a plugin that's installed with it. The main access to the options in the program is this wrench. And so you click the wrench, and now we're going to go to charts. And uh, these settings make more sense when you have charts. So you click charts, and then at the far right here, there'll be the chart downloader. There are other ways to load charts directly from NOAA and so forth, and we might cover that later. But for now, let's use this method. You click this downloader. Ah, this was already in here, and I didn't delete it. So when you, I just want to show it as, as you would see it. When you download, when you click the downloader, you'll see this is empty. Then you click Add, and then these are international charts, which we have to come to later. Not interested now. Go up here to NOAA inland charts, and for now. We're going to look at these ENCs, Electronic Navigation Charts of Vector Charts. We'll look at those later. Now we're just going to look at the raster navigation charts. Those are going to be graphic images of the paper charts. And for now, let's go by state. There's various ways to select these. Our course has uses waters in western Washington, although, of course, uh, charting and navigation practice we teach applies anywhere. Uh, so let's click Washington. And once I've clicked Washington, or let's see, South Carolina, or any state here, it has brought up here in the chart directory, this, this line here, is saying where it's going to store the charts. And the reason it came to this one is because that's where I've set up to store the charts. Normally, it would start out, this would be blank, and you can select a folder, just go to your browser and make a folder where you want to store your charts. I happen to store the chart. Actually, that's interesting. That's not normally where I store the charts. But anyway, let's put them there for now. It doesn't matter. That's where it said they are. Um, but that's okay. So we're going to put them there. You would just go select your charts and put them where you want to. And uh, Okay, so there. Then what do we do? We say okay. Now we select the charts. 
So uh, let me look at this. Uh, yeah, and that's the folder where it's going to load the charts. Now here's one thing. This this is a very nice a downloader function, and it will keep track of updates to the charts and things like that. So it's very powerful, and someone's worked very hard to make this a nice feature as this public domain program. The only thing we might recommend is that maybe on a later build, they might add the chart number. It's really a very valuable for a navigator to, uh, to deal with chart numbers. But they don't hear, they just use a description. And so that makes it sometimes a little harder to figure out where we want to go. But the ones that we want will be down here. Okay, let's choose Port Townsend and the Strait of Juan de Fuca Eastern Part. This one is 18465 that we use uh, in the course regularly. And let's maybe take the entrance part of the strait as well. So this is the eastern half, that's the western half. So we're going to take three charts for now. So you say OK, and then it uh, downloads those charts. Now those charts are installed. Now let me do some. This is showing you where those three charts are located. This is our chart we use in the course. This is the entrance. This is a little detailed chart of Port Townsend. But when you first start this program, this chart outlines may not be on. So after you download the charts, you may not see anything at all here. Just in other words, nowhere in the world will you see any charts. So now we have to come into play with looking at some of the some of the various optional assets. And one of them right away is to go to this display. Let's look at that display. I'll go across each of these for you. Display. So we want north up. That's a standard way to navigate. Enable chart quilting. Well, let me shut that off for the moment. With chart quilting, just blend. If you have neighboring charts, it blends one to the other, one seamlessly next to the other. And in many applications, that's a more more normal way to go. But this program offers the option to do without that, and which has some uh, different behaviors, which I'll, which I'll show you. So enable chart quilting, we're going to shut that off. That means we're going to look at one chart at a time. We have three, they could overlap, they could be right, seamless, right next to each other, but we're only going to see one at a time. Preserve scale, that's not so important right now. Smooth panning, I assume that's better than not smooth panning. Uh, and so forth. Show the grid, show the chart outlines. And this is, generally it's nice to show the outlines. Now if we go to charts, let's go to the next one, charts. This is the where they've loaded those charts, document charts. That's where the three charts are loaded. Later, if you want to get rid of those charts, you could, in other words, not load them. Let's say you have a bunch of charts and you just don't want all the extra charts. You just remove that one from there. You can always just add it back. The charts are not removed from your computer when you remove this. It just takes them off this list. They're still stored on your list. Uh, vector chart, we're not doing vector charts, we're not doing groups. Tides and currents, we'll uh, talk about that later. And chart loader, we've already used that. Connections, this we, is very important, uh, very important to us for our simulator, which we're going to be showing very shortly. And uh, this is for uh, setting up some details about the vessel, your own vessel target itself. We come back to that in a later, it'll be on first introduction. Uh, these show status bar, show chart bar, show compass GPS status window. I would check all three of those to get started. The compass GPS status window is this thing up here in the corner. That's pretty nice to confirm that you've got a GPS signal or not. We do not have a GPS signal now, either real or, I mean, neither real nor simulated. In the next video or two, we'll show how to put simulated ones here. This, uh, uh, these are details we don't need now. The plugins, we're going to come back to plugins too and uh, use in particular ones that popped up these windows over here. This has, this program, Open Captain, has some really remarkable plugins, uh, including weather routing, uh, weather overlaying weather maps, and uh, many, uh, several other really powerful features. But now we're, uh, we're not going to use those. So, okay. 
Oops, I t oh yeah, so here are these pictures. Now, here's a thing that a lot of programs are like this, not just this one. You see, we don't see little thumbnails of the charts when we're zoomed out. You just see, now I'm again rolling the, I'm rolling the mouse. I'm rolling the mouse, and if I go out and look here, what I've got on now, and I'm now left-clicking and dragging, left-clicking and dragging, and it uh, zoomed on me there a little bit. And now, so I'm doing that. You can also use the plus and minus key. And often on a boat, when you're actually navigating, we always recommend using the plus, doing everything with the keys. Plus, plus to erase it, minus, minus to make it smaller. And then you pan uh, with the arrows. That is the safest way underway. Uh, it's your desktop at home. You can choose whatever works best. You also have these keys up here. This is minus and this should be zooming out, and this should be uh, zooming in. Some interference here, uh, and zooming in, like that. So you have to figure out which one works best uh, for you. But here's the point I want to make: when you're doing, when you're running your charts unquilted. Un, I mean, not quilted. Then you see, notice you see here the actual full chart. If I zoom in on this, I can actually read the labels on the chart along the bottom here. You see, and sure enough, that's 18465. I can read this information over here on the dates and so forth. But I can also, this is called the chart bar. And we'll have more to say about that later. But when I roll down to here, this behaves the this behaves a little bit differently when you're in the mode that is quilting versus not quilting. So I'm not quilting now, and when I come down here, you see it pops this thumbnail up at the top, like that. And it also gives us this information about the chart down here but it doesn't highlight anything on the screen itself because we only have one chart going. Then if you wanted to see this chart over here, you would just roll over to it. Now, the fact that these scales are different, I think is, a, is that one button I don't have set right. But here is this one, and likewise, when you come down here, you see this. And if I got somewhere in the middle, or if you have a lot of charts installed, let me see if I get somewhere in the middle here. between these two. I can't get, I can't seem to get both bars. Sometimes you can see both bars down at the bottom. Like what? So that's, uh, you have to just play with that and uh, figure out which which mouse controls or um, pad, um, trackpad or so forth works best for the controls under, under, your, under your operating system, your computer, and your hardware. Um, so let's go back though for a quick look at quilting. So I go back to Back to here, display, and turn on enable chart quilting. Okay, and then say okay. Okay, we'll do it and apply it. Apply it does it, but doesn't shut the window. Okay, shuts the window. Okay, so now these are seamless. See, these two overlap each other like that. If I zoom in, so this is this chart here under that scale. And then over here, let's see if I come out to about here. The other, here's another uh, int a valuable note, actually. I loaded just two charts. If you loaded the full state of Washington or the full state of Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, the whole area, the region where you're navigating, then you will get much smoother chart behavior in this program. For example, this is a view you would never see if you had all the charts loaded. But with the uh, RNCs, the, the charts that we loaded, there, these are about somewhere between 1 and 4 megabytes each. So you just can think about that. Um, let's see, what else do I want to show here? We might look at this scale. This is actually an ECTA standard scale that they've reproduced very well here. This is a 10-mile scale. That's gray and black, and these are 10 miles. It must be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. 
And uh, then as you get to, uh, see that's getting smaller because that's now that's 10 miles from here to here. So if I zoom in, now this will change to orange and gray. This is now one mile. So that's what that scale means over there. You have here one of the tools that, um, in fact, probably, oh, now, okay, let me come back to that. One of the, here now, look at this. This is that same uh, map or chart bar on the bottom, but now it behaves a little differently. You see what it does here is we have these two charts. This one, it shows, the, this chart is the one that's red, and this chart over here is the one that's red. This is our, this is the chart we use for the course over here. And uh, like that. Again, if you take the time to download all the charts of a region, you get, frankly, a nicer, uh, a nicer presentation of the charts. So there's just, in this introduction, there's just one last thing I want to show, which is an extremely valuable tool, and that is you get it from pressing the M key. It measures the distance between two points. I think, let's see, right-click measure. So you can do, I did a, okay, on the chart, I did a right-click and measure. That's an M, shows an M. So I can either click this and get this tool, then I can measure the distance between here and here. And then to get rid of it, if I go up here, it's going to keep measuring it, right? So if I hit a, so if I want to measure between, let's say, this bay here, I want to get the distance, well, let's say I want to get the distance between uh, between this rock and this uh, hard place. So I could just hit the M and go here and over to here. And there I get it as 1.15 miles in direction 254M. Now, where are those units? Let's go back here to the wrench. Units. Um, show magnetic bearings. Let's shut that off for now. So we're in nautical miles. We're in speed and knots and depth and feet. Okay, that's good. Now, now if you come back to your M tool, uh, you got here, goes to here, and now you see the bearing 257 without any label as a true direction. And that's that. Well, I'm going to stop there so this doesn't get too long, and then add a part two where we start looking at second uh, second uh, level uh, applications. So you download the program, load the charts, and uh, then we can start practicing uh, navigation problems.